Lois Schultz. Uh, Lois this past week went on home to be with the Lord. And so uh, nobody ever said a bad word about Lois Schultz in the area. Everybody loved that gal. She used to be the piano player and the organ player over at St. John's Lutheran. Anyhow, today the visitation will be at Kate's funeral home right between Memphis and Richmond. Uh, Kate's funeral home from 5 to 8 p.m. and then Monday from 2 to 8 p.m. at Kate's funeral home. And then the service will be Monday uh, from 2 to 8 p.m. Uh, Monday from 2 to 8 will be the visitation there and then there will be a service at Kate's funeral home 11 a.m. Uh, no, that's not at the funeral. That's not at the funeral. Okay, that's at Trinity Lutheran Church in Mount Clemens. Yes. Your mic's not on It's not? No. I didn't want to grow up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> got the Peter Pan syndrome, okay? Okay, so visitation will, uh, the service will be 11 a.m. at Trinity Lutheran Church. If you didn't get a chance to visit, uh, at the funeral home on Sunday or Monday, you can visit at 10 o'clock a.m. Tuesday. Amen? Well, when kids grow up, this is what happens. Are you ready? <laughs> this is a mother's letter or note to her family. <clears throat> the bathroom door is closed. Please do not stand here and talk, whine, or ask any questions. Wait until I get out. Yes, it is locked. I want it that way. It's not broken, and I am not trapped. <laughs> I know I have left it unlocked and even open at times since you were born, but because I was afraid some horrible tragedy might take place, I did that. But it's been 10 years, and I want some privacy. <laughs> Do not ask me how long I will be in there. I will come out when I want to. <laughs> Do not bring the phone to the bathroom door. Do not go running back to the phone yelling, she's on the pot. <laughs> Do not stick your little fingers under the door and wiggle them. That was funny when you were two. You're ten now. <laughs> Do not slide pennies, labels, or notes under the door. If you, have followed, if you have followed me down the hall talking and are still talking as you face this closed door, please turn around, walk away, and wait for me in another room. I will be glad to listen to you when I am done. And yes, by the way, I still do love you, Mom. <laughs> That's really how it is with Mom, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I want you to take your Bibles and take and turn to Second Kings, and I'll tell you where to turn after you get there. Before you got to speak, Pastor Shane, don't let them play a song. You'll never grow up. They'll make you cry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can see that cute little baby with all those cute little babies over here. <clears throat> Amen. Well, you know there are some themes, topics, and texts that pastors enjoy teaching and preaching on. And there are some characters and people within the Bible that pastors enjoy teaching on. And by the way, I see you, Dorothy LaVoy, back in the back. Mm -hmm. When my uh, mother, when my mother-in-law went on home to be with the Lord, it was in 1985, and Dorothy came into our lives again in 1985, and she adopted Joni and I, along with Dave and June and a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, my, well, not today, but my mother would have been 90 uh, this year. My mother-in-law would have been, oh, a little bit older than that, 95. So, uh, Dorothy has adopted us, and she's been quite the mom for us through the years also. Never forgets her birthday. She'll call us up on her birthday, call us up on her anniversary, and say, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Amen? Amen. But that's not what I'm teaching on today. There's only one woman mentioned in the Bible that they have her last name, and I married that woman. You didn't know that, did you? There's one woman and her name is called the Shunammite woman. I married the Shunammite. That was her maiden name, Joanne Francis Marie Shunammite. And so today I'm going to teach on the Shunammite woman in honor of her, okay? Our text is going to be found in 2 Kings 4, verses 8 through 36.
Father God, I pray right now that you just open my mind and my heart and the heart and minds of the people here today. Father, that we would appreciate what our mothers have sown into our lives through their life. I pray, Father God, that the principles that you taught them and that they passed on to their children, that we would pass them on today in this church service, that we'd never forget this message, that we'd never forget just what you can do in our lives. We'll totally sell out to you. Help us honor our mothers today and treat them well, not just today, but every day of our lives. To honor our mothers and our fathers, which is the first commandment, we promise that it might go well with us and that we'll live a long time on this earth. And then, Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that as we teach our children, that they would see just how, how important it is to love their mothers and to honor them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Verse 8, and it fell on the day, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8, it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. Everybody say, a great woman. Great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned him there to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, with walls, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a lampstand, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in there. And it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into this chamber and lay there. This, things I want to share about my wife's family and her as a Shunammite woman was this. I've taught on the name of Jesus, what that name means, deliverer, salvation, healing, power, and the God, the name that God gave him. I shared many times before on the importance of giving your children good names over in Proverbs 22 and verse 1. Well, the name Shunammite, or Shunammite, means this, the place of quietness and rest. That's what Shunamm means, a place of quietness and rest. There were three main strengths that this woman had, and those are the same strengths that my wife's family had. And they are kindness, self-sacrifice, or servant, I should say, and faith. And those are the traits that were in my wife's family also. They always would say this when you met them. If you went over to their house to eat, they would, she would always say, Warren, can I make you a plate? She didn't hardly know me. She would always, uh, when I brought her home, uh, her daughter home, she would say, well, uh, would you like to stay for a cup of tea? How many of you guys stay and have a cup of tea with your mother-in-law? <laughs> Late at night. Did you do that? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, when you were dating, Pam? Yes. No. No. See, no. <laughs> I was lucky to get in the door. Yeah, I was he was lucky to get in the door, <laughs> Pam's dad said. <laughs> well, anyhow, that's how my mother in law was. In fact, in my wife's family, it's kind of a strange thing. Her dad, her dad was kind of a unique man also. He bought a brand new car and he asked the salesman, was that enough money? Are you sure? <laughs> when I heard that, I said, oh, man, I've never seen anyone like that. I mean, I'm always trying to get a lower, a better deal. He would ask, is that enough money? Well, that's her family. They just were very, very kind. And in this uh, text, we see it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. Let's look at this 13th verse. And he said unto him, she said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast shown care for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. A very contented individual. Didn't have to have the most, didn't have to have the best, didn't have to have a huge accounts and banks and everything else. But you know what? She just had to turn the kindness and love loose in the family. If you have a mother like that, you can turn to her and say, That's you, Mom, okay? That's you. <laughs> Let's read on in the text. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she has no child 
and her husband is old. Isn't it interesting? A prophet asked her what she, she, what mm -hmm. she would like, and she could have said a lot of things, mm -hmm. but she could have said, well, I sure would have liked to have gotten pregnant when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I sure would have liked this, or I sure would have liked that, but she didn't respond like that. But God gave her her heart's desire. That's what the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto you. I remember when uh, Marge and Pete Pahodai started having grandchildren and Joni and I didn't have any yet. We were getting so antsy for grandchildren. And then they started coming. <laughs> what a wonderful thing. Amen? Yes. And I spoil every one of them. Every time I get a chance, it's so she. Okay? Let's see what takes place. Verse 15, And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, when the time comes, thou shalt embrace a son. In other words, in nine months, you're going to have a young boy, baby. And she said, no, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine hand. <laughs> and the woman conceived and bore a son at the season that Elisha had sent unto her, according to the set time. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to, get to the reaper. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. Underline that phrase. Usually when children get hurt, they want mom. They don't want dad, they want mom. You know what dad usually says? Oh, I'll stick a piece of tape over it. If you cut yourself, it'll be okay. Shake it off. Not that big a thing. Suck it up, okay? The mother lets you lean into him and uh, strokes your hair and makes sure that she pours a methylate on her uh, disinfectant that she's really kind to you and says, honey, it's okay, you can cry. Dads don't say that. They say, suck it up. Start acting like a man. You're not no baby. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But that mother, I don't care, that boy could be 40, 50, 60 years old and she will trip over herself to make sure that boy or or a child has a plate of food on a holiday, Dad said, what am I, chop meat? Joe, you can sit in the But that mother will make sure that that baby's taken care of. Amen? And when he had taken him, verse 20, and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. Mm. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called on to her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men or one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. Underline that phrase, and come again. Yes. Faith, that's the third characteristic my wife's family had was faith. Faith. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. There were certain times you could seek these prophets. And he said, The father said, Are you going to go there today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, and don't forget this, these four words, it shall be well. Say it with me. It shall be well. That's her faith <coughs> speaking. Her son had just died. A child has a problem in childhood of that. You know what mother, how mothers usually respond? It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. God's going to take care of this. A mother of faith responds that way. You'll get through this. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Dry him, and go forward, slacken not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God in the Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, over there is that Shunammite, that woman that is quiet and generally restful. Run thou, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered and said, What? It is well. It, no, it's not well. Well, how a minute you would have said it's not well. It's not well. He just, the baby just died. It's not well. The baby just died. How is she responding? She's responding by saying what? It is well. When peace like a river yes. attended my way. You know, the man had just, had just lost her whole family. 
When storm clouds like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It wasn't well. Why is she talking like that? Faith. Look at the person next to her and say, our family needs faith. Say it comes from mom. Moms, you're, you're the most influential, influential person in that home at times. Your children are looking to you. Sometimes your husband is looking for you to respond with faith. Honey, I just got a pink slip. Oh, God, what are we going to do? That's not the way to respond. You know the way to respond as a wife and as a mother is this. It's going to be all right. All right, God's still in charge. Honey, it's going to be okay. Maybe you didn't get all A's. Maybe you got a couple C's, but it's going to be okay. You can study a little bit harder. We'll get some tutors. Maybe get someone to help you. Don't get to have Dad help you. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you know what? I laugh about that. The kids, I'm, I'm real good in math. Bruce, I'm good at that. Real good. But when they started getting into algebra and trigonometry and calculus and all of that, they would say, Dad, can you help us? I helped them the one time they got about a D. They never asked for help anymore. Okay? Okay. Look at the person next to you. You better know where your giftings are. Amen? They never asked Dad for help with math no more. I'll tell you that. Is it well? Everybody say, it's well. It's well. It's well. He's still on the throne. It's well. And maybe you got a son or a daughter or a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law or a child that's in rebellion, in rebellion right now. Mothers, guess what? When God asks you how it is, how are you going to respond? It is well. It is well. You're working on that situation, Lord. Thank you that you're working on it. Let's see what takes place. When she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is bitter within her, and the Lord hath hidden it from me, and hath not told me. Those of you today who think you know it all in the area of spiritual uh, warfare and everything else, listen, this was a prophet that was uh, one of the greatest prophets, and he said, God has hidden it from me. You will not know what's going on in another person's life unless God opens your spiritual right. eyes to them. Amen? Right. So don't tell me you know everybody's problems. You don't. Neither do I. Amen? Amen. That's why the prophet asks the question. Sometimes you've got to ask questions. Let's see what takes place. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? You know what she's, what's speaking here is bitterness, hurt. She's saying, you knew my heart. You knew, you knew that I wanted a child. You knew that I desired a child, and now you give me a child, and God's going to take the child away? She's speaking like this. Let's see what takes place. Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, and greet him not, and if any greet thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Underline that. Lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Mm. Underline that phrase, I will not leave thee. See, this is called the highest benchmark of faith. This is Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto thee, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What did she say? She said what? It is well. Hebrews 11, and verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently or keep on seeking him. Persistently. Perseveringly. Don't throw in the towel when things get tough. Mothers, you can't afford to do that today. In this day and age we live in, and you see have a son or daughter that's went astray, or some grandchildren that went astray, guess what? You're the very 
individual God wants to use to get their lives turned around. She said, it is well. Let's go on. Verse 31, And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and lay upon his bed. He went in and therefore and shut the door upon the two of them and prayed unto the Lord. Skip back down to verse 21. What had she done? She had what? Shut the door. The phrase shut the door is very significant. It means to shut out unbelief. Oh. Underline that phrase. It means to shut out unbelief. You know, you're always going to have people in your family that say, that kid will never amount to anything. But you know, as a mother, you ought to respond this way. I don't care if he's a prodigal or what. You ought to respond this kid as well. God's working on this situation. Doesn't look like it, but I want you to know I've been praying the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors across my child's path. It's going to be okay. It is well. God has never stopped working. He's working on that situation right now. All the fretting and all the worrying and all the tears and all that, God has seen it. God knows about it. And the Bible says that Jesus wept and Jesus knows all about tears. So I have dried my eyes now. It's going to be okay. It is well. Amen. Shut the door upon the two of them and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child, put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this shit away. You know what's so interesting here? I'm looking for Nancy. I'm looking for Carol. I'm looking for Donna. I'm looking for Teresa. I'm looking for somebody, and all they call her is what? A sugar white woman. I said, she's got to have a name, Lord. She's got to have a name, but the Bible doesn't record her name. There's one other place where the Shunammite woman is mentioned. David has become an old man. He doesn't have any heat. They heated with wood back then. But they said, go get us a Shunammite woman and let her lay in his arms and give him heat. Yeah, that's, that's found in 1 Kings chapter 1, okay? I was going to use that today, and I didn't want to tell my wife about that. Okay. <laughs> I do want you to know the Bible says, though, that David did not know her. She was just, she was a virgin, and she was used for just heat purposes. You say, Pastor, I don't believe that. Oh, yeah, just look at 1 Kings chapter 1, you'll find it, okay? <laughs> well, let's see in verse 36. And he called to his eye and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she had come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in, fell at his feet, bowed herself to the ground, took up her son, and went out. Faith. Faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to lie. Please, God. You know, before we go on, I did want to share this with you. You know, mothers need a break every now and then, too. How many of you know that? Mother, we treat our cars a lot better than we treat our mothers sometimes. And I came across this article, and I said, I'm going to read this uh, throughout this service, but it said this. Many of us take better care of our cars than we do of our mothers, and yet we only expect our cars to last five or six years at the most. But we expect our mothers to last for a lifetime. Maybe we need a maintenance manual for mothers so we could know how to take care of them, at least as well as we do our automobiles. Here are some items that might be included in such a manual for mothers. Engine. A mother's engine is one of the most dependable kinds you can find. She can reach top speed from a prone position at a single cry from a sleeping child. It sounds like Superwoman, doesn't it? But regular brakes are needed to keep up that peak performance. Mothers need a hot bath and a nap every 100 miles. A babysitter and a night out every 1,000 miles. Everybody say amen for that, right? And a live-in babysitter with a one-week holiday every 10,000 miles. Battery. A mother's battery should be recharged regularly. Handmade items, notes, unexpected hugs, 
and kisses and frequent I love you's from their children do well to recharge their mother's batteries. How many of you would to say I didn't remember that, right? Windshield washers overflow when a mother cries. They should be treated immediately with a Kleenex and a soft shoulder. I remember the story the one time where a guy came home and there were dirty dishes in the sink and there was uh, clothes, all babies' clothes and kids' clothes all over there. There was dirt all over, popcorn, cereal all over the floor and everything. And when the uh, husband came out and got out of his car, I mean, there was toys out in the lawn, there was, the garage door was open, the golf balls were rolling out of the garage door, and it was just a mess. And he went in and was looking for his wife, and he found her upstairs in bed, and he says, uh, Honey, what did you do today? She said, well, remember those, so every time you asked me that question, she says, today I decided not to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really how it is, isn't it? <laughs> For a mother's manual, her brakes, see that she uses her brakes to slow down often and come to a full stop occasionally. A squeaking sound by your mother indi indicates that she needs a rest, amen? That squeaking sound is what? Get mad. <laughs> Fuel. Most mothers can run indefinitely on coffee, leftovers and salads. But an occasional dinner for two at a nice restaurant out will really add to your mother's efficiency. Amen? I'm going to be able to say amen to that, right? Chassis. This I'm going to be real careful here. <laughs> mothers run best when their bodies are properly maintained. Regular exercise should be encouraged and provided for as necessary. A change in their hairdos or makeup in spring and autumn are also helpful. If you notice the chassis is beginning to sag, <laughs> immediately start a program of walking, jogging, swimming, or bike riding with them. These are most effective when done together. Tune-ups. Mothers need regular tune-ups. Compliments are both the cheapest and the most effective way to keep a mother running contentedly. Oh yes, and let's not forget to speak to a mother lovingly and respectfully, especially when she reminds you to drive carefully and have a good time. If these instructions are followed consistently, this fantastic creation called a mother should last a lifetime and give good service and constant love to those who need her the most. Well, I guess we don't follow them consistently too much, amen? Well, here's what made my wife's family such great mothers. It is well. How can I help you? I'm content. I've got enough. I'm so glad that the mother of my children is a Shunammite woman. She taught her children to be kind, self-sacrificing, and to have faith in God. This trait faith has been passed down to them. A couple of my wife's aunts are nuns. They really are. That's honey, am I right? Yeah, they're nuns. When I was dating Joni, I would uh, they would say, Warren, you'd make such a nice priest. <laughs> and I would say, You won't have any nieces and nephews then. <laughs> but I'll tell you, my wife's Aunts who are nuns have prayed for Joni and I every single day of our lives since we've been here. Amen. They send us cards all the time saying, hey, we pray for you, we're praying for you. It's going to be okay, everything's going to be all right. We've went through some uh, tragedies and we've also had some triumphs in our life, but I want you to know that these Shunammite women have prayed us through those things. Because of their prayers, they've helped to create in their nieces and nephews lives of faith. These Shunammite women have done that. They have produced great women in the Shunammite clan. And those traits are in my daughter, my daughter-in-laws, to this day, because of those Shunammite women. I know I have been given a wonderful gift uh, as a mother of my children, a wonderful wife, and I know it hasn't always been easy being married uh, to me and being, because uh, I'm prone to one that runs. I, I run, 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 and either she runs with me or she gets dragged <laughs> along the way. But faith, 
All mothers today, if there's one characteristic you need, you need is faith. Amen. Faith. I'm standing here right now and I'm looking at a young girl. Cassie, would you stand at this time? Cassie saw it, would you stand? Cassie has some children and she just got her master's degree in the 21st century. She's a But she kept on pressing in in the 21st century uh, to be a mother of a child, uh, children and also to have a degree. And that's what it means to be a great mother today. It really does. Nathan, I'm going to ask you to come at this time. Nathan, uh, Nathan is uh, our son who has this gift of being able to put things in words uh, on his blogs and that. If you ever saw one of Nate's blogs, you would say, that didn't come from his dad. Probably did. It came from his mother, okay? Uh, but he has, uh, he can do that with words. So Nate wanted to read this for his mom this morning. Um, yeah, so he calls her the shit of my woman. I call her mom. <laughs> and I wrote this 10 years ago when we were at the other church and they wanted something for Mother's Day, and so I just happened to get this off. It's Mother's Day. What can I say? Hi, Mom. Dear Mom. There has to be another way. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. We're not going to Al Cool J. <laughs> I don't know where to start about the best mother of them all. Here I am, age 42 and now a grown man. And I remember growing up, you told me to be all that I can. From time to time, I have to wonder if I make you feel proud, but then I think of how you love me, and I know there's no doubt. My mom, the first person I met. Yup, only God has known me longer. You birthed me, you nursed me, you birthed me. Saying little verses to me, you were the first to hold me, the first to cry when you saw me, the first to smile at me, and the first to tell me you love me. I may be a chip off the old block, but mom, you molded me. My first four years, it was you and me until Dad got home from work. You saw my first steps, heard my first words, gave me my first spanking, and, and you spanked higher than Dad. <laughs> I remember when I was scared of the things that weren't there. You were always there to kneel and say prayers and run your fingers through my hair. You wiped my face full of baby drool, saw me off to my first day of school, helped me learn the golden rule, and then watched me graduate from college too. Ain't it cool? It's amazing when I think about it. If it wasn't for how you raised me, I wouldn't be me. You showed me how to live a good life, how to, what to look for in a wife, how to set the table, and put the spoon next to the knife. You taught me how to fold my clothes and burp through my nose. And when I was done playing, you made me clean up my G.I. Joe's. You're my first favorite girl. Every other has had to live up to you. Every friend needed your approval. Every girl had to pass the mom test. Not a decision was made without thinking, what would mom say? You taught me how to seek God first, look for the best and not the worst. Rejoice when people are happy and hurt with those that hurt. You taught me how to keep a level head, how to pray before meals in bed. You taught me to be a good listener and to always lend a helping hand. I don't know if you know how much you and other moms mean to us, literally and figuratively, as Pastor Shane said, we wouldn't be here without you. Everyone has a mother, not everyone has a mom, or ma, charity, or mommy. And to everyone who is listening to me read, I think you need to see, moms are a gift, you see. They are the first to love you, the first ones to hold you, the first ones to know you. She went through all that pain to deliver you. But then she took you in her arms, and through her tears told you she loved you, and has stopped loving you since. And that's what a mom does. She gives, she loves, she gives love, so when you see your mother, go up to her and kiss her, tell her that you love her, and how much you appreciate her. Have you ever thought about the miracle of life? I can't believe I almost lost you even before you were born. They said you had cancer and you only had a few years to live. Cancer tried to take your life and your ability to create life. Cancer lost. Mm. Hallelujah. You weren't supposed to have kids. You weren't supposed to be alive. We're both miracles. And then you had two more miracles. I'm still the favorite. <laughs> Look at you now. Three grown kids, one son-in-law, and a pastor just like Dad. Two daughters-in-law who love and serve God. 
nine grandchildren who bring such joy to your life. And don't let me forget, don't forget your granddogs. Everyone loves to come home and see mom and grandma. Your love reaches through generations. The cool thing is, you're more than a mother. You've been a chef, a doctor, a chauffeur, a dog sitter, a video gamer, a cheerleader, a boss, an encourager, a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on, and a friend to rely on. You've been a scolder, a molder, a knee kisser, and hand holder. Thank you for making sandwiches my way, cutting the cost crust off my bread. And when Dad wants spaghetti his way, you made mine instead. <laughs> now that I'm seeing you smile and listening to you laugh, I still can't get over how much you flirt with and love Dad. I pray God blesses you for how you've blessed me. And for your moms, take her to dinner. Make her dinner. Let her sit back and put her feet up. It's her day. The Bible says to honor your mother, and she deserves to be honored. Not just on Mother's Day, but every day. So I'm alone in my room, looking back at my life, and it's easy to see how special you are to me. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. <laughs> now I did do something. I want you to know that, okay? Didn't write about me. <laughs> If Rosie Weiss is here, I wanted to, to just read this for Rosie very quickly. Just in case you forgot, if your mother has a refrigerator, your picture will be on. I mean, you have your grandkids' pictures on her refrigerator, your children. Okay? In fact, I think we have a refrigerator, but I haven't seen it for a long, long time. If your mother has a wallet, your photo will be in it. You'll hold it up and it'll hit the floor, all right? They want to tell you about their kids. Your mother plants flowers every spring and enjoys sunrises every morning and sunsets every night. When you talk, she'll listen. And if she could have any child in the universe, she would still choose you. Wow. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Doesn't that make God's love? Love even when we don't deserve it. She'll still make beefy nachos, amen? <laughs> I'm watching David here in the front row. He's thinking about how uh, just uh, when Pam comes in the house, where do you get go, David? First, second, or third? I mean, she loves mom first, right? She always goes to mom first? Yeah. So, most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> Well, we have a gift for all the mothers here today. Uh, Sarah, where are you right now? I want all the mothers to stand at this time. And I want the ushers to pass out these gifts to all the mothers. Amen. Yeah, let's give it 